Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I am Sunny Bancholi, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Industry Stalwarts interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we achieved with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry heavyweight in our today's session of FaceTime with Leaders, Mr. Vineet Jain. He is a strategic finance professional with an impressive career spanning various industries, including healthcare, FMCG, and steel for over two and a half decades. He has a career long track record of demonstrated expertise in business transformation, MA, project management, pricing strategy, process optimization, governance, and change management. He has held key leadership positions overseeing teams and driving successful outcomes in complex projects. His latest role at Medtronics India has been CFO and Senior Director, whereby he brought about numerous transformations, established strategic relationships, and implemented integrated business plans among the other jobs. Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Sunny, and thank you for the opportunity provided uh, by the World Development Council and by the team of Directors Institute. I'm absolutely honored to be here, and thank you for such an elaborate uh, uh, introduction of mine. Pleasure is ours, sir. So, Mr. Jain, could you let our viewers know about your journey of reaching the position of Senior Director and CFO? Oh, certainly. I mean, uh, it's been 25 years for me, and uh, those 25 years I've done multiple roles, multiple cities, and also uh, in different countries, uh, also managing the APAC. So I think before I get into the details around how I built my career, I would say before I talk about the principles on which I have generally worked, right? There are four or five key principles that I've generally worked across all my 25 years. First is, uh, certainly there is no shortcut to success. You've got to really work hard. You've got to know your subject really well. The second one is really learn from your failures. I mean, you would have a time when you will fail. The project may not succeed the way you want it. Uh, and hence, you've got to learn from that and quickly adapt it uh, to, to move on and use that learning for the next project. Uh, the third one, I, I it's very close to my heart uh, from a governance point of view. I feel that there is nothing called 98% or 99% in ethics. It's binary. Either you have it or you don't. So I have a firm believer as far as that is concerned. Uh, the fourth uh, principle that I've always used, build your team better than you. So I've been fortunate to actually have team members, very diverse team members. When I was in Australia, uh, I had team members from 16 different countries. Uh, when I was in India, I mean, I had teams who were real, really diverse. And I've been able to develop and fortunate that I was part of, I was a leader of that team. Uh, so I've been able to develop that team. So develop the teams better than you. And I think the last one principle that I have is the inclusion, diversity, and equity. And, and that's, again, a very passionate and close to her heart subject. So those are the five principles that I have worked. Uh, I would pick out three top, uh, you know, my uh, achievements, I would say, so to say, uh, in the last 25 years. I think the first tough one that came in in 2009-10, uh, for the first time when we were doing the transaction outsourcing of financial processes to IBM in PepsiCo. And that was the first time any FMCG company was actually doing the outsourcing of uh, finance, risk, finance transactions. Uh, and that involved transition of people, of what they call it, rebadging of people from PepsiCo to IBM, which was the outsource provider. And that challenging assignment actually made uh, made me really a strong leader from a people perspective. And it took almost six months to stabilize that entire process of transition. Um, I, I think that was a great learning, right? 
The second one I would say is, is the biggest challenge uh, 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 was to go to Australia and really fix the entire uh, the organization. Uh, the Australia business of PepsiCo was going through a very tough period from a governance point of view and also from a business point of view. So while I was leading the governance agenda as a controller of, of that business for Australia and New Zealand, uh, I supported the CFO in business transformation. When I say this, uh, they, they were going through a tough period. There were massive issues on audit committees. Uh, there were massive issues on organization. There were massive issues on performance. So I think I was able to really develop the right process and governance from an audit committee setup, from the organization perspective, and then supported the business transformation to, uh, with the help of uh, CFO uh, partnering with, with the leadership team. I think the last one I would mention, uh, Sunny, is, is my last role with Metronic, and I no longer work with Metronic now, recently uh, left Metronic. But in the last three, four years, we've actually made sure that we transform the entire business uh, from a very low margin business to a healthy, profitable business. Uh, that's one important thing. But I'm more proud uh, for the fact that India was awarded the peak performance award in FI22 by the Global Metronic. Uh, and also uh, during pandemic, Indian Met India Metronic team and the leadership team, along with myself, who were part of that, was able to really help not only employees, but beyond employees because uh, of various, because we were in healthcare and we were able to support. So I think I was very proud of those kind of achievements as well beyond the financial performance of it. Wow, I must say that's an excellent start to this interview. Okay, continuing our conversation. So Mr. Jain, could you mention some of your biggest inspirations that have helped you achieve success? Certainly, Sunny. I think if I do not look beyond the family, uh, I must say, uh, if I actually look inside and the family, in the last 25 years, I have moved multiple cities within India, moved to Australia, came back from Australia. And this cannot be done without the support of your family, right? Uh, both my two daughters, as well as my wife, moved along with me happily every two, three years, right? And I think the source of inspiration actually came first from them. Uh, and certainly the second one I would say is my mentors. I, I was very fortunate, Sunny, that I had great mentors, both in uh, PepsiCo as well as in, in Metronic, who really shaped me. And uh, even when there is a short-term failure, they helped me navigate to remain on those core principles that I just spoke about, right? So I think I was very fortunate with mentors and coaches and guides that I had and, and a loving family who actually helped me every career move and kept moving every through three years, uh, you know, eight, nine times in the last so many years. But yeah, uh, that's that's been certainly my motivation. All right. So building on to that, uh, our viewers would like to know, that Mr. Jain, you have been honored with several awards. Which of them has been your biggest achievement and why? Great. I mean, uh, hard to pick one, but uh, 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 risk management award that I we got it as a PepsiCo unit was great one in two years in a row uh, from CNBC and ICICI. But I would still say that uh, the CIA award uh, in FI22 uh, as a CFO of post-pandemic or pandemic impact, somebody who was really helped during the pandemic uh, award from CF, uh, CII uh, was the best award, I would say, personally speaking, because it was way beyond financials. It was way beyond numbers. Uh, it was not about performance. It was about how during the crisis, someone has helped not only your organization employee, but beyond your employee. So I'll just give you a very brief about what the award was. The award was about uh, best CFO uh, acting as during pandemic period. So we were able to actually work with many organizations uh, on, on ventilator supports because we had the ventilator resources. We were able to actually provide them uh, oxygen cylinders, oxygen generators, and obviously uh, apart from our own employees. And, and since our connect in the healthcare industry was much bigger, we were able to actually help many of them outside our own employee base. I think that is very satisfying. It was never a great experience. Uh, you know that uh, in April uh, to June 21, India went through the worst uh, wave two crisis and uh, nobody wants to be in that situation. Uh, but you know that's when you rise to the occasion. Obviously you had a business to deliver, but beyond business, you, you had to really see what is important uh, uh, beyond the financials and the numbers. So I would say that CIA award, which was given on that aspect was really close to my heart. 
Okay. So on behalf of all our viewers and WBC team, I would like to congratulate you for your excellent achievement. And uh, we are sure that this is just the beginning. Uh, there are many more to come. Thank okay. You. Continuing our conversation. Mr. Jain, how and when did you first develop interest in sustainability? Yeah, I mean, I would say when I came back to the head office in PepsiCo after working for quite some time in the field, I mean, obviously, uh, when you work in the field, you just execute. Once you come to head office uh, around 2010-11, uh, I realized that, and, and before I go there, food and beverage industry is generally perceived as a negative industry from a sustainability point of view, because you are consuming a lot of water, uh, you are using plastic. Right, so there is there is a lot of negative element of that, and and there is no denying the fact. But what I realized, uh, Sunny, is that when I came to head office, I realized there is a lot of work which is happening behind the scenes. And I'll give you an example of 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 our agro team in PepsiCo was really helping uh, the farmers uh, save water through drip irrigation across Punjab and many other states. Right, and that was saving a lot of water. Uh, they were actually reducing water usage in the plants. Uh, developing alternate packaging uh, and reducing the plastic usage. And I think there's the norm, and this I'm talking about 12 years back, right? Uh, and there's a whole lot of work that was happening behind it. I'm sure there's more to be done in the current environment and where we are to really save our planet. Uh, I, I think with that kind of an understanding and being partner to those initiatives, I was exposed to that and I thought there's a lot more can be done and should be done along with really delivering the financial numbers and the results. And that is what I feel. And, and, and now with so much focus post the, post the climate uh, accord and the ESG requirement, the disclosure norms and all of that, I think is the, the acceleration needs to happen much more now. Right. Okay. Mr. Jain, as someone who has been on several boards with several companies, do you think that better external governance is needed? I, I, in the current environment for a public uh, listed organization, I think there is enough uh, from a governance and the regulations point of view. So from a regulations point of view, I would say the new BRSR requirement, which is part of the annual report is very exhaustive. Uh, and, and the focus should be more on implementation and standard consistent reporting and disclosure so that it can be measured and the progress can be seen. What I think we, can do is two, two things. One, how do we accelerate? Today it is only for thousand odd listed company. How do we accelerate to rest of the organization, rest of the uh, industry, uh, those who are smaller and also further deep dive into smaller SMEs also to some extent, not the entire uh, uh, the, the BR, BRSR uh, metrics, but at least to some level, we should drip, drill down deeper into our corporations, whether it is small or a big. The last one I would say is that uh, even the, organiz the government organizations, whether it is ministry or government bodies, I think what they can do from their perspective is to start disclosing these numbers on their own, right? From what are they doing it so that they can lead and you know walk the talk. I, I think that is happening. Uh, I would certainly want that acceleration to happen so that there is a much more knowledge and appreciation of the fact uh, lead led by the ministry and then supported by the corporations and the organizations, uh, whether it is big or a small. Rightly said. So what values do you bring to the table as a corporate governance expert? I mean, uh, I mean obviously I'm a finance professional uh, and, and, and I spoke about uh, multiple uh, you know, roles that I have done in multiple industries. Uh, so I think I, 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 am, I will be able to bring a lot of value and experience from those industries. Uh, other aspects I would say is that, you know, things like audit committee, whistleblower committees, uh, ethics committee uh, are the ones where I've played a significant role in, in the past and set up those committees in many organizations. Uh, and, and that really helped to improve the governance of, of the, of the, of the uh, of cor corporations that I have worked with. And also uh, now with ESE certification, um, I, I'm sure I will be able to contribute much more on this aspect of the uh, in, uh, sustainability part of it. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, beyond my functional knowledge, the commercial understanding actually is most critical. If you really don't know the business, how will you support the organization, right? So every year, every every organization and every role, I, I've always gone beyond my functional hat 
and we are the business side to understand what's going on. Uh, and that is needed to, if you really want to bring a change in, 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 the, in the organization. So you've got to understand the business very well. Obviously, you need to understand your functional area very well. And I think that is where I have developed my skill sets over the years. And I believe that with this knowledge, experience, certification, uh, I should be able to bring uh, value to the table. Rightly said, Mr. Jain. Okay, so talking about the change, here is my next for you. Uh, what are some of the most groundbreaking changes you have seen in any of the industries you have worked for uh, with technology? And what changes do you foresee with the introduction of technology like IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, Web 3.0, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Excellent question. Actually, every CFO is actually dealing with what's the impact of technology on the organization, business, processes, and so on and so forth. I'll start with uh, healthcare first. And, and this is where, you know, we spend about, uh, Sunny, about 2% of our GDP on healthcare, right? Uh, it's significantly lower than many many big developed countries. Uh, you know, we are a 1.4 billion people. Uh, uh, and, and for that, you need really very strong primary healthcare focus system. Uh, I must say and acknowledge that post pandemic, there's a huge investment, both from the government and the private sector coming in healthcare. Now, what is going to happen using technology? I would say the screening, diagnosis and treatment. And I can give you examples of AI being used for stroke detection, uh, AI being used for uh, cancer reduction, early screening, uh, and, and the, there are mobile apps which can actually just use your you know, body parts to really detect at least much earlier than you would generally do it in stage two, stage three, stage four kind of a diseases. But I think technology is being rapidly used in healthcare. In my view, in the next five years, healthcare is going to be a huge beneficiary of leveraging technology for the benefit of people who are suffering from diseases and, and also from a corporation point of view to really invest and get the best out of it. Uh, beyond healthcare, I would say just one more uh, you know, area where the technology is going to be very, very big. I would say the entire supply chain spectrum, right? Any industry, you take it from sourcing right up to the output or the del final delivery of the product, uh, the technology is going to play a role, whether it is IoT, sensors, your tracking of movement of goods, uh, how, how much time it is being taken, how much energy is being used in the entire supply chain ecosystem. I think technology is going to play a big role and it's not only going to impact the uh, or improve the efficiency of the entire process because of, of, the, of the technology, but also help in the entire ESG sustainability part of it, because you will be able to use less fossil fuel, you will be able to track it much more better, and you will be able to disclose it. And hence, I believe if there is one sector, I would say beyond sector, one function, which is going to be big beneficiary of technology is supply chain ecosystem across industries, I would say. Right. That was so insightful of you, uh, Mr. Jain. All right. So uh, we are building FaceTime with leaders community for a cross pollination of knowledge and a community of independent directors for having better corporate governance in the country. So what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hewal Mehta and the whole team of WDC? I must say that this is a fantastic initiative, right? We have a wealth of knowledge, Sunny, in terms of a lot of professionals who don't know how to harness that knowledge beyond their current roles and the organization they work for. And on the other hand, uh, we have corporates and the corporate governance and the regulators who need experts, right, who are available within our fraternity to be able to use it. Now, what you guys are doing is while well, WTC and the Jishan and, and Hevel is doing is to bring everything together, right? And this is going to be really helpful and it's actually, in my view, it's a very transformational because what you are doing is to really help the organizations, countries, corporate governance to a certain level uh, from what, where we are. And, and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be short term. But over a period of time, I believe this initiative will really help the corporate uh, uh, regulators, the government and individuals who are really partnering in this whole journey uh, to really deliver uh, and help grow the economy of the India. So I think it's a massive. I don't think it's a small one. Over a period of time, it is going to be a significant transformational initiative. So congratulations to the team uh, and Jishan and Hevel for really doing this. And please continue. Uh, I've given some feedback. 
please continue to work on it so that we can deliver much better experience to everybody in the journey. Great. Great, Mr. Jain. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will definitely inspire the future leaders. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vinod Jain, for joining us today and wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by the Directors Institute has unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and have enriched their minds. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for calling me and, and, and in conversation with me. Thank you. Have a nice day. Nice day.